So why am I sitting inside with a raincoat on? Because I have a feeling it's about to rain. All right, guys, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to make it rain inside of Photoshop. And for those people who are gonna say, hey, we're gonna be an After Effects, yeah, that's easier. I'm also gonna show you how to make it rain in After Effects um, at the end of that video. Hey, it's Colin Smith here from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. All right, so now that it's not raining in here anymore, it's safe for me to jump back on my computer and I'm gonna show you how to create rain inside of Photoshop. I'm also gonna show you how to animate that rain. And then for those of you who have After Effects, I'll show you how to do it in After Effects. It's actually a lot easier in After Effects, but if you don't have it, we're gonna learn how to do it right now inside of Photoshop. Okay, so we're going to create a new document. I'm going to choose File, New. And because I want to do it the size of the video, I'm going to choose uh, HD 1920 by 1080. You'll see that under the Film and Video presets right there. And I want to set the background to black. And I'm just going to click OK. Now, if you didn't see your dialog box like that, um, you can find it there inside the new dialog box. This is how you turn it off. If you go under General, and you want to use the legacy one, which is what I was using, turn that on. If you turn that off, you'll get that full screen one that maybe you're using. And once again, you'll see a tab there that'll just say film a video and choose the preset. Okay, so let's create rain. Now this is going to involve the use of using a lot of smart objects and, uh, and you're going to see how this works. Now, a lot of this I just kind of picked up from Flash. So I don't know if you guys know, but I used to do a lot of Flash animation and action script back in the day. And so I've taken a lot of that knowledge from Flash over to Photoshop and other applications like After Effects. So what we're going to be doing is creating a nested animation. It might not make sense to you right now, but it'll make sense very quickly. So what we want to do is we're going to work inside a smart object. But before I do, I want to create a brand new layer. And I want to fill this just with a color. We can fill this one with black as well. I could have just duplicated the background, it doesn't matter. But the reason I'm creating this is because when I create the smart object, I want the smart object to be the full size of this document. Otherwise, when I, I create a new layer here, we create our raindrop. Otherwise, it would be the size of the raindrop and it wouldn't quite work the way we want. Okay, so we want to create our first raindrop. So what we're going to do is just hit the B for the brush. There's our brush there and let's just grab a hard edge brush. All right, so we're making that brush a little smaller. I'm gonna change the foreground color to white. Now I wanna create my first drop in white, but what I also wanna do is make sure I'm looking at this at 100%. So if you just double click the magnifying glass, it zooms in to 100%. Okay, so let's just have a look, go back to our brush by hitting the B key. And I wanna just make a small raindrop. So I'm just gonna drop it somewhere in the middle. I'm just gonna to click to apply it. Now that's on the new layer, make sure, and we just call it drop just so you know. And of course we always name our layers, right? Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to choose filter blur and I'm going to give this a little bit of motion blur. Now you can set the angle, see what we've got there is straight up and down. And I'm going to make that raindrop about that long. Now, this is going straight up and down. You could set it to an angle. So if you've got more rain, we're going to do it at an angle. But sometimes it can be hard to animate it exactly. So what I prefer to do is to just start off with it like this. And then I'll animate it straight up and down. And then later on, if we need to tilt it, we can just rotate it. You, you'll see what I mean. But it makes it work easier. Now, I want this a little thicker. So I'm just going to hit Command J twice. And what we've done is just copied it. And I've selected all the layers just by clicking and then shift click and then control E to flatten it down. All right, so this is actually gonna be our first raindrop. So what I wanna do now is I wanna bring these into a smart object and start to do more. So uh, I don't wanna animate it here, I wanna animate it inside the smart object. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go under the layer, so I'm selecting both layer one and the drop layer, and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna convert to a smart object. Once again, the reason I did that is because I want the smart object this size of our document. So if I double click, now our smart object is gonna open and you can see it's at 1920 by 1080. 
So I can hide the background if I want. I really don't need it anymore. But I'm going to turn it on just for now so I can see what I'm doing. So there's our drop. Had I not had that background, our smart object would be the size of that raindrop. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to animate this raindrop. So in order to create animation, we're just going to go under our window and we're going to open up our timeline. The timeline is where all our animation goes on. And I'm going to create video timeline. And by clicking there, you can see there's our background. And then there's our top layer of our raindrop. Now, I have a lot more tutorials on uh, Photoshop and video and animation and stuff like that. Check out PhotoshopCafe.com. I even have some uh, premium courses, you know, where I'm teaching you video editing in Photoshop. So you can do all of that. In here, we're just going to focus on the raindrop. So what I want to do is move this raindrop to the top. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and I'm going to drag it and you're going to see I want to start with it off the screen. I can still see a little bit there. So I'm pull that off the screen so it's not visible. So let's twirl down this little option here and here's our position. So what we want to do is animate it to go from the top to the bottom. So if I click this stopwatch, two things happen. One is now we're going into changing position. So we're going to create an animation and it's at a keyframe. And that keyframe is saying, you know what, we want this animation to start at the top where it is. So it's set that to the beginning of a, of a timeline uh, keyframe now. All right, so we want to create our animation. Let's do it one second. So I'm moving one second. Actually, let's go a little bit more. Let's go three seconds into the future. And now if I hit the shift key and drag this down, now the reason I'm holding the shift key is to constrain it into a straight line. And I want to keep moving it until it's right off the page. Now, as we move through this animation, now you can see, as I hit the space bar, there's that raindrop. And where it's loaded up green, that means it's loaded into RAM. Now it will play in real time. So let me hit the space bar. You can see that raindrop's coming down, but it's coming down very, very slowly. So I want to speed it up. Now, the way to do that is just to grab that second keyframe, drag it closer to the first one. That means now that this movement from the top to the bottom is going to happen in a shorter period of time, which is going to give the impression of things moving faster. So now we see in one second that raindrop comes down. Maybe I want to speed that up even more. So we move the keyframe closer. There we go. And we can see there's that raindrop going down. Excellent. Now what I want to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it down. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shorten this animation to last only that period of time. So now if we hit the animation, it happens like that. Notice it keeps going and that's because I've got looping turned on. So if you don't have that on, just click this little icon at the bottom and turn on looping. And then we'll see we've got our looping happening. Now I'm going to hide the background because I don't want that to show through in our main animation. So I'm just going to hit Control S for save. And I can close out the smart object and it puts us in our main timeline. So there's our little um, icon there saying, you know what, we've got a smart object here, but it's not going to animate until I turn create video timeline. Now, if I click, you're going to see that raindrop. See how it keeps coming down? And that's because it's looping. What we want to do, though, is we want to lengthen this. So let's just pull this back a little bit. What we need to do is duplicate it. So we're going to hit Control J a couple of times. And now I'm just going to drag these on top of each other. And now we're creating an animation. Now let me select all three of these. Hit Control J again. And now we've got six of them. So if we play this back, notice what we've got. We've got one drop of rain continuously going down. See that? All right, so we've created the basis of our animation, which is our single drop of rain. Now we want to duplicate this. So rather than having to go through and create every single drop of rain again, what I'm going to do is select all of these. This is all our smart objects. Right click, convert to a new smart object. So now we have one object here that contains everything. 
So all we need to do now is duplicate this. So I'm going to hit Control J. And now we've got two of them. Now we need them on top of each other. So in order to get them on top of each other, we've got to drag this one out of that video group. And notice now we can place it on top of the other one. So now we've got two drops moving in complete unison. But we don't want them exactly in unison. So why don't we select one, which is the top layer. So we can either click here. Notice how we select it on the timeline by clicking on the layers. Or we can click on the timeline and it will also change in the layers to select it. Okay, so let's take this one and we're going to offset it slightly. So now if we hit the play button, notice now we've got two drops of rain. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to put these into a smart object. So now we've got all of these in one smart object. And I think you guys know what I'm going to do. I'm going to hit Command J. I'm going to duplicate it again. I'm going to move it over here, but this time I'm going to Control T or Command T. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. And we'll offset that over here. In fact, why don't we put it over the top of it? There we go. So now if we play this back, we've got more drops. But also if we stagger it, so notice what happens now. We've got the first raindrop, then the second one comes after it. And now we've staggered them so they're not starting in the same place. If I pull it here, notice they all start and move together at the same time. Place. If I move it over here a little bit, now this going slightly different. And notice because one's enlarged, it appears to be catching up on the other ones, which is great. That's going to give us a good effect because the larger ones are closer to us and they're going to appear to be moving faster because they're closer because of parallax. All right, so we've got that little bit of rain and you've got it. We're going to select both of them. We're going to right click, convert to smart object and control J to duplicate it, stagger it, and you've guessed it. Let's control T, let's make it a little larger. And you hit the Alt or the Option key to do that right there. All right, and once again, we're just gonna right click Convert to Smart Object. So what we're doing is we're just continually nesting these underneath each other, and now we're starting to get some rain. Now, if we want to copy this rain across, we're just going to hit Control J for another one. And let's move it in a little bit just so we can see it. And now we want to start staggering them. So let's hit Control J again. And go back the other way. And see what I'm doing? Now I'm starting to intensify the rain. One more. And uh, why don't we do a couple here? Control J of the small ones. All right. So let's select them all. Once again, convert to new smart object. And now what we're going to get is see how it's starting to rain in place right there. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a picture here. And I'm going to take this picture. And I'm going to drop it in. I'm going to hold down the shift key to just kind of drop it. And we'll put it to the back. And uh, let's just hit Control T just to resize this image just for fun. And hold the Alt or the Option key to do it from the middle. And just put that in there. And we can see now, uh, let's play around with that image, just reposition it a little bit. So now we're starting to get something that looks like, uh, you know, a photograph in the background. Now there's some other things I told you we we're going to do. We we're going to rotate it. Let me make sure this starts in the beginning. There we go. Okay, let's rotate the rain. Let's select the raindrops. Control T for free transform. And now we're going to put a little bit of angle on it. And also I want to enlarge it so that it covers the entire boundaries of the image. There we go. So now we've got our rain kind of coming in at an angle. Okay, and there we go. We can start to see that we've got a little bit of rain now going on inside of Photoshop. So, you know, you can vary the length of these. There's a lot of different things you can do to uh, get the rain exactly how you want it. Now, another thing we can do to uh, show you how to get it out of here, what you want to do is hide 
the stuff in the background. So all you've got is just the raindrops. Then you're going to choose File, Export. We're going to choose to Render Video. And if you're going to just drop it over the top of something, you could just use these settings here and then you would use a blend mode to drop it over the top of your video, something like a, a lighten mode or something like that. Or if you want to actually make it completely transparent, what you can do is change this to QuickTime, choose animation high quality, and then under alpha, we're just going to choose straight unmatted and then just click render. Then you can take a video that you can loop and render and overlay the top of your photos to make cinema graphs, or you could uh, you know, use it on your videos. Now let's have a look at doing it in After Effects. Okay, so it's gonna be a lot easier to do in After Effects. We're just gonna create a new composition. Just click on Create New. I'm gonna import a file just so we can have a, you know, an image or something that we can just kind of see what it looks like. I'll just grab this. It doesn't really matter what we have. And I'm gonna click down there to create a new comp. And there it is. And this is at 1920 by 1080. So we can see we've got a picture here. You could use it over the top of your video um, if you want to put on video or photos or whatever you want. Okay, so to create the rain is painfully simple. What we're going to do is we're just going to make sure that that's selected. Then we're going to choose Effect. Go down to Simulation. Under Simulate, we're going to choose Rainfall. And I'm just going to have a look here. I'm going to hit the space bar so we can start it playing. And you can see there's the rain there. And there's parameters we can change. So we, if we want more or less drops, we can do that. Let's change the size of the drops. Let's make them real big so make it easier to see just for now. Getting a little big like that, it starts to look like snow. So be a little wary. Um, we can have more drops. So it's raining heavier. Or we can have less drops. So it's drizzling. So we can control that. Then another thing is wind is going to kind of put that to the side. So if we drag that, see how it's going to make it look a little windy. And we can put a variation in that wind like this. So it's not all moving at the same. You can see that. Uh, we can turn the opacity all the way up. So you can, you know, it's pretty much like snow now, but you can see a lot easier. Okay, let's bring the opacity back to something a little bit more reasonable. And that's it. That's how you create rain in After Effects. All right, so the question for you this week is, do you have After Effects? Uh, if so, do you use it? Um, as you can see, it's a lot easier to do these kind of animations in After Effects. But also, as you can see, you can do a lot of amazing things inside of Photoshop if you're willing to experiment and try some different things. Now, my head is just exploding with a ton of different ideas of things I could do with animation in Photoshop. So if you guys would like the occasional tutorial on animation in Photoshop, let me know in the comments and I'll have a look and see. You know, I've got a ton of ideas, things I could do. If you guys want to see it, happy to add those tutorials. Otherwise, we'll just kind of stick with what we've been doing. So anyway, guys, if you like these tutorials and you love Photoshop and Lightroom, hit the subscribe button right now, wherever it is. Um, there, I think, or there or something. One side. It's always flipped when I look at it. Hit the subscribe button right now and ring that bell and then you'll be notified whenever I upload a new tutorial. If you like this, smash that like button into dust, drop a comment, let me know what you think, and be kind, oh, be kind-ish. <laughs> anyway guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.